Prong collars look pretty mean. Um, they're not when they're properly fitted and properly used. I'm going to break out a prong collar. Do not be alarmed. It looks like a medieval torture device. Okay. This is a prong collar. The reason these were so effective is this is how dogs control one another. They grab each other by the neck, and that's what this does. Okay. This is what your puppy's mom would do if he was getting really obnoxious. She would pick him up by the scruff of the neck, and he would just freeze. Okay. And that's what he'll do if you have this on his neck, and it grabs him by the neck. Okay. I'm going to talk about this for a few minutes, even though some of you aren't going to be using these. The principles involved here are pretty important Okay. when it comes to pulling and, and safety. So first off, you never want to use a choke chain on a dog. Choke chains injure dogs because they slide up and down the neck. And when they get down here by the shoulders, they're not very effective. And you have to torque the vertebra of the neck to get the dog's attention. Never put a choke chain on a dog. A properly fitted prong collar does not slide up and down the neck. It stays right here at the ears and the jaw line. It's a constant reminder your dog can't get away with pulling. And he won't pull at all on a properly fitted prong collar. If you're going to go this route, buy it from me. There's about 20 different styles of prong collar. This is the only one I recommend. I use these very differently than other trainers do. Lots of trainers use these punitively. If they have a dog that's dog reactive, every time he sees a cat or a squirrel or another dog, he starts lunging and barking. They pop the collar and make the dog yelp and try to discourage the behavior. I don't use them that way. Here's how I use them. Anytime you have a dog on a leash, there's one thing that's by far the most important, and that is the leash can never, ever be tight. As soon as that leash is tight, your dog's in control. He's leading you around. When the leash is loose, he has to look to you for direction. When it's tight, he's in control, he's leading you around. So the first thing everybody asks is, well, how do you keep the leash loose? You don't let it get tight in the first place. Before it gets tight, you give him a little correction. Nope, you're staying here with me. If that works on a leather collar, great. If not, you probably need a prong collar. There's a couple of things about prong collars. Number one, believe it or not, how hard your dog pulls doesn't determine whether he needs a prong collar. What determines whether he needs a prong collar is how responsive he is to correction when you're giving the right correction with the right collar. So I'm going to start picking on dogs here. Your dog's name again is Odie. So let's say I put Odie on a, on a leather collar and I go over to the front door and I swing the door open and Odie tries to run by me and I give him a little correction and he stops. He probably doesn't need a prong collar. If I can yank his head off and he keeps pulling, he needs a prong collar. 